The U.S. military's plan for a Mach 5 bomber, hypersonic weapons those capable of flying over five times the speed of sound are the hot new buzzword of defense industrial complexes across the globe. China, Russia, and the United States have all vigorously and relatively openly pursued while long-range ballistic missiles could already attain hypersonic speeds. They travel in predictable arcs and can be detected well in advance, giving military and political leaders time to react. Furthermore, an increasing number of air defense systems may be at least partially capable of intercepting ballistic missiles. However, back in 2013 Lockheed executive Robert Weiss caused a stir when he told Aviation Week the aerospace titan was well into developing a hypersonic aircraft and invoked the legendary SR-71 Blackbird spy plane by dubbing it the SR-72. No manned aircraft in operational service has matched the remarkable long-distance Mach 3 cruises of the Blackbird. Until recently, SR-71 simply outran missiles fired at them on photo reconnaissance missions over North Korea and the Middle East. Now the latest surface-to-air missiles render Mach 3 speeds inadequate to assure survival, but a hypersonic aircraft might again outpace the threats arrayed against it. The SR-72 depicted in Lockheed's concept art was described as capable of cruising at six times the speed of sound. The challenge, however, lay not so much in designing an aircraft that could attain hypersonic speeds as ensuring that it could also take off and land at slower speeds. The rocket-powered X-15 testbed, which in 1967 recorded the fastest flight by a manned, powered aircraft ever at Mach 6.7, had to be carried aloft and released mid-air by a B-52 bomber. Reportedly, Lockheed and the firm Aerojet Rocketdyne made a breakthrough by developing a combined cycle engine involving both a turbine for speeds below Mach 3 with a scramjet engaged for hypersonic cruising. A scramjet generates thrust by sucking in air while traveling at supersonic speeds, meaning that a separate engine has to push the airplane to those speeds before the scramjet can engage. The combined cycle engine makes the dual-engine approach viable by having the turbine and scramjet share the same inlet and exhaust nozzles. Weiss made clear he hoped Lockheed would receive funding to build an optionally manned 60-foot-long, jet fighter-sized, single-engine testbed aircraft that would cost only $1 billion. This would then lead to the development of an operational twin-engine 100-foot-plus SR-72. In the years following Weiss comments, Lockheed officials continued drawing atypical levels of attention to a supposedly secret program too sensitive to reveal to the public, teasing statements that kinda sort of implied they had already built an Stradian-72 testbed. Lockheed's hyping of a hypersonic aircraft which may or may not already exist seems explicitly intended to build support for additional funding. This may be because it's pursuing the project with the Defense Advanced Research Programs Agency, DARPA which focuses on innovative development of cutting-edge technologies often well ahead of capabilities in operational service, rather than fulfilling an Air Force requirement. While the U.S. Air Force is interested in deploying hypersonic aircraft in the long term, it already knows what it wants in the near future, lots of F-35 stealth fighters and forthcoming B-21 Raiders flying wing stealth bombers. As the Air Warfare Branch already can't procure all the aircraft it wants, Carving out funding for a highly expensive avant-garde concept won't be easy. The Blackbird's unique SR designation stood for Strategic Reconnaissance, reflecting that its job was to penetrate defended airspace on short notice and snap up photos of what was going on below before anyone could move or cover it up. However, the Appalachian SR-72 is arguably misleading for a number of reasons. A hypersonic SR-72 would almost certainly be an unmanned aerial vehicle (UAV). In other words, a drone normally receiving a Q designation. To what extent it would rely on man in the loop, which might be susceptible to disruption, or pre-programmed control versus its own autonomous algorithms, remains an interesting question. Furthermore, while Instradian-72 would have an intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance ISR, role, it would also surely be intended to strike targets with little advancing warning. In other words, it would be a bomber. Traveling around 4,000 miles per hour, a hypersonic bomber could theoretically depart from a base in the continental U.S. to hit targets across the Pacific or Atlantic in just 90 minutes. Unlike the various hypersonic missiles under development, it could then return to base and load up for further sorties.